Hey, everybody, and welcome to the JKD Blueprint. I'm Big Sean Madigan. I'm hoping you're enjoying these podcasts. We're having a great time doing them, and we're getting a ton of feedback, and it's really growing, and I couldn't be prouder. Um, this week's episode is going to be with uh, my friend Nick Cavallino. And um, I, Nick and I have never met before, but we're friends on Facebook, and I get to see a lot of his videos that he posts. He's uh, in annoyingly good shape, and... <laughs> And, and he's, you know, he puts out a really athletic um, vibe with his, um, with his videos and his training. And, and I like that. I, I, you know, as you guys know, I'm really into um, martial arts that work and uh, fun- functional systems, functional strategies, and, 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 and the training of that. And when I saw what Nick's doing, I was impressed and I was, and I wanted to sit down and chat with him. So Nick, welcome to the show, bro. Thanks, man. It's, it's great to finally meet you, man. I'm, I'm happy. So you're in the Detroit area or? Yes, I'm in the South Field, the Detroit area. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that, that's like, like Brooklyn. So I'm from, I'm from Brooklyn. Yeah. You're from Detroit. There's not that's much right. difference. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's so right. how'd you get, how'd you get involved with martial arts? What, uh, what got you hooked? Well, you know, like anyone else, man, I, there's always a visual sort of inspiration. You know, I, I saw, anytime I saw a martial arts, a practitioner, whether it be like, you know, uh, wushu or any kind of kung fu style, to me, it looked like these guys were like um, magical, you know, yeah. and uh, like magicians. And they were doing things that were just unreal and they were like supermen. And uh, I wanted to like learn how to do that. I-, I wanted to be cool just like these guys. And then when I saw Bruce Lee, he was completely different than everybody else that I saw. So I, I-, I looked at the guy, he's a small Chinese guy, right? So He's a, he's a smaller guy, like I was a smaller guy, I'm still a smaller guy, you know, but he, he had this confidence. He had, he portrayed his sort of like confidence so, so well that it was really hard to like kind of not see that. So to, when I saw that, I kind of got inspired to where I wanted to be like that. I wanted to have that sort of presence and sort of like uh, ability, uh, at least close to it as much as possible. Uh, and I noticed that he just, he, he had a, he was not like everyone else, even in Inner Dragon. You know, when you watch Inner Dragon, he's not wearing the karate geese like everyone else is doing. And, you know, he kind of scoffed at a guy who said, hey, where's your uniform? He's, you know, he played by his own rules. And that was like so prevalent throughout his whole life. He, he did he, what he, he wanted to do. He had a swagger about himself. Yeah. You know, for, for, for a smaller statue guy, he had a yeah. swagger about himself. He was walking around like he knew he was confident. Absolutely. And that, I think that's, I've seen, you know, I've witnessed that kind of thing before where you, you know, someone can walk into a room and he doesn't have to say anything. He doesn't have to look mean or anything. It's just like their aura, their energy that they, they, they is is that of like confidence and like that presence. You can feel it when someone walks into a room, Uh, very few people have it. And I've always wanted to attain that. So Bruce Lee was like the inspiration for me, but, but other than that, it's, um, it was uh, also just like, the fitness part you know obviously when i read his books i started getting inspired by uh what bruce lee was all about it was really interesting to me just to see how he took fitness and health uh really really seriously at a certain point in his life he kind of he did a flip where it was like hey i gotta make this uh i want to be functional i need to be able to do what i'm practicing and make it work uh in a real situation because to him the only thing that was important to him was what works, what, what really works, you know, let's cut out the BS, let's get past all that stuff, because every martial arts style really has fluff or fillers that they fill the style with, <clears throat> which, you know, some people, it does, there's things that work in it that, for some people, and there's other things that don't really work as effective. Bruce Lee was an anomaly. He was a physical uh, enigma. I mean, he was, he, he had ability, I mean, for, I mean, to his credit, he, trained that ability i mean he didn't have the same oh, right. physique. his physique that wasn't he wasn't born like that he had to build that physique and um you know through hard work and to, that's to his credit but i mean it was really really interesting to read all of his uh you know all of his quotes and everything were cool but essentially they're all notes they're just notes you know they took right. off from magazines or books that he read so and he kind of related everything to jkd which you know was always fascinating to me how he became how JKD had evolved over, you know, from the early years with Jesse Glover and all the guys, you know, on, um, you know, Ed Hart from like that point 
all the way to like, you know, to 73. So it had gone through a, a complete evolution. I mean, throughout the time, it was so fascinating to understand, to, to read about it, to, to really study it. Before I started actually training under somebody, I studied JKD and the art and the philosophy for years. For sure, years. right, right. Several, I mean, I have a collection of books that I read, I highlighted, I made notes. I was a complete nerd with it. I was obsessed with it. So at a certain point, I said, you know, I, I want to be able to train under somebody because I tried to train on my own. I tried to do my own thing. And because there was nobody in Detroit that was teaching JKD. And I thought, hey, there's nobody. I got to go to California if I got to learn, you know, JKD. That's, that's where all the students are at or Seattle. Right, right, right. right. So <laughs> I, I, was, I was out of luck, man. So finally, I, I, I found a guy, you know, um, a friend of mine had gave me a business card. He said, hey, look, there's a guy who teaches JKD. I said, no, he's a fraud. This guy's a fraud. He has to be. <laughs> who, who in Michigan, t you know, knows JKD? He probably watched some movies and thinks he's, he's, you know, he's Bruce Lee. But when I went to go see this guy, I mean, he was, he was very good. He was very talented. And he was, I went and watched the class and I was, man, I was amazed. I said, you know what? I want to sign up right now. And I, that was the beginning of like the, the journey of like really kind of discovering more and more about uh, JKD and not just JKD, but like other other forms of combat and training methods that I really, really appreciated for my teacher. That's great. That's great. So now you have, you're running your own school in Detroit or? Yes. Yes. I, I just opened my academy in uh, last year at this time in October. So, and then, you know, we were doing really, we, had a, we were off to a great start and then like, you know, COVID hit and everything changed, you know, right, so sure. it's, yeah. it's, it's rough. It's rough. It, it's hurting a lot of schools. I know. And it's, 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 that's a shame. Yeah, um, yeah. When, when, when people come to your school, people walk into schools, they, 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 get, they, get, they get nervous. Am I going to get punched in the face? Am I, am I going to be able to keep up? Am I going to fit in? Like, how do you like talk to like, you know, the new guy comes walking in, you know, he's me. He, you know, he's 55 years old. He's fat. He wants to do something. He's never really done martial arts. His knees hurt. And, you know, I, I have a, I work for a Wall Street firm. I can't go into work with a broken nose, but I want to get a little bit better. Like, how do you alleviate that kind of fear? This is a great question. Okay, so I, I really address this kind of thing with people all the time because it takes, first of all, it takes a lot of guts, man, to walk into a martial arts academy or school. It takes a lot of guts to walk through that door. You know how many people just, you know, park their car, look at the door and then drive away? You know, right. sure. you, right. I'm not going to go in there. I'm, you know, they're shy. You know, you walk in, first of all, walking through the door, like I said, is really a, a, a commitment right there. Walking in, now you see people throwing punches and kicks and hitting pads and some, some are grunting and screaming. <clears throat> <laughs> you know, it keep, it's very scary, mm -hmm. very intimidating. But, you know, the people that kind of walk through that, they're already conquered one little, you know, massive, massive plateau right there of just walking in. So it's my job uh, when I speak to these people to make them understand that, look, I know it seems really, really crazy right now, okay? But believe it or not, that's going to be you in like, you know, a few days or a week. You know, you're going to feel like, okay, once you start to understand how things work, this is going to be like anything else you've learned, you know, in your life. It just takes a couple of weeks and then you'll feel right at home. Once you start to talk to the people and get to work with the people, and it, I think it's a really, really important thing to have the right kind of people in your school. Um, sure, I, right. I came from a school where I had, you know, there was a lot of good guys there, but there was also some meatheads, you know, and they, they made things a little bit more difficult for the newer people. And that wasn't really always great. Right. So, um, but it's hard, you know, I, I guess it, it is hard though to, you know, cause we had separate classes for different kind of, you know, martial arts methods that we did at, at my school that I came from. So it was hard to kind of police everything, but you know, a lot of people got, got away with a lot of stuff. I don't, let that stuff kind of slide here. I don't let people, first of all, we have a, you know, everyone works together here. There is no separate classes really. It's between just the, my kickboxing classes, it, it, it includes all the JKD stuff, all the other styles that we do. And then there's the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class, which is like the, all the ground fighting. Uh, those are the only two separations really. That's it. Sure. All right. But everybody works together. You know, there's no clicks. There's no like, you know, okay, well, we're over here and you're over there. Those guys don't talk to these guys. You know, we don't have that here. You can't get away with that over here. Everybody like feels like a part of the family. I think it's really important to get that person to understand that there's, you know, 
in my school, it's not like, you know, we have a bunch of like young bucks, you know, running around with, you know, in their 20s, just their 20s. We have people from all walks of life at all ages here, you know, so it's not like, right. you know, it's just a bunch of young kids, you know, with like rippling muscles and that's not really what it is here. So I, I think that really kind of helps too, is the visual, what people see when they walk in is, uh, yeah, because you know. people have to be comfortable. Yeah. Cause yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's, I know it scares people when they walk into a school and they'll, they'll, you know, they see a bunch of young studs with cauliflower ears and busted noses, yeah. you know, bleeding bloody lips and, and you're like, yeah. yo, come on, sign up. Uh, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Absolutely. I, you know, we're like people get the misconception about martial arts i i, I made a joke on uh, facebook i posted something like you know hey like when people say like my parents still say to this day you know yeah my son he teaches karate you know that's what he, he does karate. <laughs> you know and <clears throat> nothing against karate it's just that's not what i do but they don't right. understand they don't know any better so right. we're not like, traditional martial arts but we're also not mma you know and there's nothing wrong right. with those two those are great right totally and get it both, yeah we're like in between. We're like, we're, we, we deal more with the street aspect of, of combat. Scientific street fighting is what we like to call it. Obviously, sure. that's what Bruce like to call it also. But that's what really, we're kind of in between. So we don't want to, you know, bore the people with, they think, oh, well, I'm just, I don't, I don't want to sit there and punch air the whole time. And at the same time, they don't want to get like, you know, just be thrown to the wolves in like a cage with like a bunch of savages just like, you know, going crazy. So we're, we're in between that space, you know. Uh, that's right. When when I was teaching public, I haven't taught a class in in quite some time, and be, be even before COVID. But I I do actually want to get into it again. Um, teaching public, I still have my private students, but um, public classes I haven't done in a while. One of, one of the things that I used to do to kind of uh, alleviate people's nerves was I kind of felt like people wanted to. They don't know this, but they kind of wanted to hit something, so. I would like, when, once they sign up, I would have like, I would work with them. Cause again, I was small. I'm not a big, I was never a big school. I teach taught out of my house. My basement holds 10 guys, mm -hmm. you know? So I would work with like, I would say, this is how you stand. This is how you breathe. This mm -hmm. is how you jab. And I would just have them kind of like jab a little bit into the air. And then mm -hmm. once they got their jab into the air and then they could move a little bit with it, I immediately took out the focus mitts. And let them hit a focus mitt, boom, 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 and move around. And I, I always felt like that relaxed people because now they were having fun. They were hitting something. They felt like Bruce Lee a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. I yeah. kind of just felt like that was a, a good way for me to transition <clears throat> into, you know, into a martial mindset. Because yeah. it definitely is a mindset into what we're doing, you know? And I think, like, you know, one of our jobs as coaches is, like, I come home from work and, you know, I work for a Wall Street firm and I'm thinking about my work to, to, to be able to flip the switch into a martial mindset, still have fun, still have friends, but it's a different environment and different thoughts. And I think when people, new people need to do something martial before they can flip the switch, you can in an instant, right? You, you can just be boom. I'm, you know, I'm Nick the fighter right now, you know, but new people need to learn how to flip that switch. And I always found like hitting a focus mitt at least from my experience, worked with people. Do you make yeah. a lot of, do you make a lot of use of focus mitts? Yes. Focus mitt training is, um, it's, we do a lot of focus mitt work. I think it's good that like, I think also when you, you know, we were talking about earlier when someone walks in the door, it's important to have, I know it sounds real, you know, obvious, but you know, customer service is a really important part of, you know, anything. Absolutely. You know, and I'm not talking about just from a selling standpoint. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just being your, being yourself, being honest, being real and being sincere, but making the person understand that you're one of them. If you, you know, when you're here with us, you are one of this, you are part of this family. You're going to be part of this whole group. It's a community here. It's a, it's not a, um, just a gym, you know, it's a, it's an academy. You know, you're going to be learning a lot of things here. You're going to be growing. You're going to be meeting new people and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, new friends, new experiences. And I think that if you, once you like let that person know, because I talk to most people when they call and they, and they, they you know, they're talking to me when they call and they ask and they inquire about things. Right. It's important to not be like the tough guy or like being like a real stiff guy on the phone. No, you just, you talk to the person like he's your best friend, you know, right. he's sure, uh, sure. you're interested in coming to my school. You took an interest. You're taking a chance to come in and calling me and, you know, um, expressing your interest. You know, I want, I want to show you how much I appreciate that. And I wanted to tell you, like, look, man, you're gonna love this. If you're gonna, if you come in, we're gonna, you're gonna feel great. You're gonna, you're gonna feel right at home. I guarantee you. 
And I want to make them really, really comfortable with that. But when coaching, you know, you're coaching a person when they're hitting the focus mitt, it's a really great, first of all, stress reliever, because we can't punch people in the street, you know, anytime we get mad, you know, and we can't do that. It's like right. frowned upon for some reason, you know what I mean? <laughs> Not but, even in Detroit, right? Right. right, I know, right? <laughs> but, you know, man, once they start hitting the pads, man, it's, right. it's like great release because you can tell a lot of these people, you know, they work in offices, uh, office settings, professional settings. And they can't lash out. They have no outlet. They have to keep everything controlled and then they're, you know, under control. And, you know, if they're like even in uh, real estate, you know, and I have, I have students that are in real estate and they, you know, they do really well, you know, they obviously can't, you know, let that stuff out in that kind of environment, you know, but when they, they come in, they hit the pads, they, they come out in here, you know, leaving better than they did when they came in, you know, they, they everything is out and they are like, just, that's like, wonderful. It evens them out. Yeah. It's, it's See, the same is, thing with what, me. What you just said there to me is is the perfect sign of a great coach. When you can sit there and say, even if it's just your goal, even if it's just your goal and it's not happening yet, when a coach tells me my students leave feeling better than they did when they got here, man, job, job done. Like, to me, that's more important than any of the martial arts that you taught them up to that point. It's how people – how people feel when they're leaving, you know, yeah. when people walk out of your school, they should feel better about themselves, not worse than, not worse about themselves. You know, that's just such a, an awesome life lesson for people. I just, if we yeah. can make people feel good in what we're doing, you know, yeah. that that's wonderful. Absolutely, man. I, I you know, I, I, um, I, I know people that have schools and, you know, there's people that, you know, they own like traditional martial arts schools and, and their thing is to, to it's like, um, you know, you see a lot of karate schools do this too, where they, they it, it kind of turns into like a product where it's like an assembly line of the same thing. And it's, sure. it's kind of, that's not what I want to follow. I don't, I don't, I, nothing wrong with it. If, if people want to do that, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to make money. It's fine. But I, my thing that I'm doing here is <laughs> everything you're teaching here it has to transfer. Okay. It has mm. to be real. It has to be real. You have to, people come to you for different reasons. And I've got several people come to me for, you know, they've been attacked. They don't know. They don't, they didn't know what to do. They right. panicked and they never had any training. So they panicked and they, they froze and they didn't like that feeling. That th those kind of feelings can stay with you for a long time. And sure. some people never get over it. Some people never do, you know, but it takes, you know, it takes a lot of guts for someone to say, you know what, I never want to feel like that again. And I got to learn how to take care of myself, especially in today's environment, man. You see the news, you see all these people going around, you know, pulling people out of cars and crazy right, stuff. Right. Crazy, crazy stuff. stuff. You, you got to know what to do. You got you to gotta know how to handle that pressure psychologically, emotionally, and physically, obviously. But, you know, everyone starts somewhere. You got to start somewhere, right? So that, that first walk in that door, that's the, that's the first step. But everything that I teach here, it has to be realistic. We're not teaching things for films, you know, that's good stuff right. Nothing wrong with that. But I would rather, you know, there's people in the martial arts industry that are great demo guys. They, they demo, they have the same partner and they, they know their, the chemistry. Right, sure, sure. It's, it's, it's important. You know, you gotta, you know, you gotta, um, you sort have to of market like, you know, yourself too. Uh, right. Guys. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But for me, I don't want to just be a demo guy. I want to be a guy that can do, I could back up what I'm doing. I could do this stuff and I, I fully can do it. And I believe in it and I believe in it so much that I want to show you, I'm going to teach you how to do it. So anybody that comes in here, they are going to learn how to defend themselves, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, two on one, three on one, three on two. We do those kind of simulations here all the time. We actually had one just last in the last class we had. And it oh, that's great. You do excites some, people. Yeah. Like scenario, do you do like scenario type work? Yes, we have to, because I, I said, that. you know, you, you guys go through like, you know, I, I, I made a joke, you know, this week, I said, you know, you guys get so caught up in like the whole one-on-one, -on -one, like kickboxing mode. Like that's not, that's not, that is not real fighting. I said, you're kickboxing. Right. You're not, I go, what, where's your trapping? Where's your other stuff? Where, where, you're learning this stuff in class and you don't, you don't try it in, uh, in sparring. Why? Everything you do, every drill that we do, you have to start thinking about sparring. You see a lot of guys, you know, I, I um, you know, I train at a, a boxing gym and I've trained at other gyms too. And you see some guys come in and they, they work the mitts real nice. They do real smooth. Then you get them in the ring and you spar with them. 
And then, you know, they, they turn into Bambi. They don't know what to do. They get, they freeze and like, Oh, because you're training with the mindset of these are pads. No, 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 no. If right. We're not hitting pads. You're hitting a human being that wants to kill you, wants to hurt you. When you fight someone that really wants to hurt you, it's not sparring. We're not sparring right. anymore. That's a different mindset. That's a different animal. You will feel a lot different. Your adrenaline level will spike. Your muscle contractions will get tighter. Your, your conditioning that you think you're so conditioned. Yeah. Everything kind of shrinks. Okay. And in that shrinking, you know, all the conditioning you did, it gets shrunken down to a, 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 a mm -hmm. half of that, you know, because all the adrenaline, all the, all the effort that you're putting into it now is survival. It's a different animal. So I go, you guys got to understand that pressure. So I said, you know, Right now, we're going we're gonna to do two on two or two on three. You know, we're going we're gonna to see how you guys handle that. And I said, your goal is to take them down. I want you to take them down to the ground because they're not used to that. You know, they think, oh, right. I'm sure, I'm sure. Sparring. So it's a, imagine fighting a wrestler, like a division one wrestler. Right. He is going to slam you on your face so fast. It doesn't matter what you, what you try to do. It, it doesn't matter. Like if, what, what do you do when you get down there? How do you know how to fight from there? You got to know how to fight from all kinds of positions. So. That's what we try to simulate. Everybody that comes in here, you're going to know how to fight no matter, I mean, regardless if you want to or not, you're going to right. know how to take care of yourself. And that's the point, you know? That's wonderful. Yeah, I, I have a lot of respect for scenario type training. I think some people get a little crazy with it, but I think it's so important. Like, it's, to me, it's the, um, I don't know the right word. I wish I was smarter than I am. It's, it's the thing that brings you from sport to street. You know, it's this idea of, if you take sport fighters and, 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 and teach them scenario type training, I think it really is, it, it's, it's the magic bullet a lot because, because it works with the mindset, you know, that the mindset is just so, it's just so different in a fight, you know, it's so different than a, than a, than a sporting fight, physically sporting fights. I'm not, I mean, listen, I'm a big, big, big proponent of MMA and boxing as just fantastic martial arts to learn. But there, if we're going to talk about street fighting, there is a, a mental aspect. There's that dirt that needs to be added, you know? And um, scenario fighting, I think, is wonderful. One of the things we used to like to do, um, we would name the heavy bag. So it's crazy, right? But like, so like say, say it was like my turn, right? So like I would get up and like my wife's name is Lori. They would name the heavy bag Lori. And I had to, <laughs> and I had to protect Lori. Oh, okay. You see, That's so now that I was, so we bring two guys up and they have no interest in engaging with me. Mm -hmm. They only want to punch the shit out of the heavy bag, my wife. So, <laughs> cause if I, so if you square off, one guy just grabs you and the other one starts mm -hmm. punching the shit out of the heavy bag, yeah. you're doing yeah. nothing. Right. So there was this idea you really had to learn to quote unquote stick and move. I had to like hit and, and focus on the other guy to protect the heavy bag, you know, cause it's just, yeah. it's a, protecting someone, which is more real life than you realize mm -hmm. than some people realize is, is, is different than just fighting for your own. Yes. You no know, fight. You know, you know, you and two of the guys attack, you know, attack me. Well, listen, this is on me. If I lose, I'm dead. You know, this is, you know, we're all men. Yeah. This is how the yep. day ends. Mm -hmm. But if I'm, with my wife or someone I care about or a friend that's counting on me and mm -hmm. they want to hurt them. This idea yes. of protection is just a completely different mindset. You know, it's a fear, you know, and, and I remember working this with some people and they would like getting, they would get visibly upset because of course we all knew each other. So I remember the first time I introduced the, the drill and I, and I had, a, I brought a guy up and, and I said, okay, you're going to stand in front of the heavy bag. Oh, are you guys? And I explained to the other guys away from him, I want you to concentrate on hitting the bag, not him. If he like turns around and tries to engage with you, just ignore him and start punching yeah. shit out of the bag. And just, uh, just as we start the drill, I named the bag his wife's name. Holy shit. Yeah. And I saw his eyes like, really? what the, f like, what the fuck are you really doing? That's fucking awesome. You know? Yeah. And he was like, what are you doing? Like, and I, you know, and next thing you know, those guys come in and they start saying his wife's name and saying a bunch of vile shit and start punching <laughs> on the bag. Yeah. And he was like pulling them off the bag, like, like as if he was in the middle of Central Park and these guys were punching the shit out of his wife, you know? Mm. 
Yeah, and he yeah. kind of, and this guy's a good fighter, and he lost all, like, semblance of, of, of martial ability. He was just went into rescue mode. Yeah. And, it, yeah. you know, afterwards we talked about it, and we will kind of agree, like, this was, like, a huge lesson for us. And, we, and it's something we focused on more, this idea of protection as opposed yeah. to just self-preservation. Yeah. You know, and I think just like I'm really happy to hear you th that you're a big proponent of uh, scenario training because it's just yeah. huge. You know, yeah, we call that uh, protecting the asset. That's that's a good drill that we do. Um, but uh, man, the way you did it, that's a good one. You name you name the bag or you name something you got to protect that, that you know the, someone that's really important to that person. That's a brilliant. I'm gonna I gotta steal that from you, man. That's a, that's <laughs> there you a good go. Good. Yeah, because it, it just it adds a realism. You know, it's just yeah. Yeah. Let, let me ask you this. Um, when you, when you do, when you do these kind of simulations and stuff like that, and you're, you have students that are like, I mean, do they, do they take it serious? Do they, I mean, they, I'm just sort of, there's a couple laughters here and there, but do they understand what they're doing? You know what I mean? Do they take it serious? You know, there are guys that I, I've had guys that kind of rolled their eyes and, yeah. and, and, and how I would approach them. I would say, listen, I need for you to do your classmate a favor. Yes. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, listen, even if you think this is hokey, yeah. one day this may save his life yep. or the life of somebody he loves. So even if you think this is hokey, try to turn down the knob on your douchism <laughs> and, and try and help your classmate yeah. who maybe yeah. is not as tough and streetwise as you and, and need some help here. Yeah. And, you know, when you approach people like that, they're usually like, yeah, man, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think it's serious. Yeah, no problem, right, you know? right. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and if someone can't do that, well, then they're a cancer in your school. You yeah. Get, you know, just, um, listen, get the fuck out. You know, but it's like, <laughs> well, it's the truth. You know what I mean? At some point, you know, at some point, you got to be like, you're just no good for the school. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think most people, if you approach them and say, listen, even if you think this is not something you're interested in, can you help your classmate out and, yeah. and, and, and give it a seriousness that he's here to save his life or the, the life of his wife or husband or child or just somebody he loves. That's a good one, man. That's, you know, that's good, man. I, I gotta, I gotta take that because that's a, that's a really good mental exercise also, because I think if, if you, if they even, if that crosses their mind, like their wife is behind them, that, that changes the game, even in training. That, they're going to they're gonna wake up right away. Their eyes are going to be like, oh, this is serious. I, I'm known. We can't touch my wife. That's a, a game changer. That's brilliant. That's a very, very good thing to do. Yes. Well, I, I wish I could say I you know, invented this, but I, you know, I stole it from somebody too. And you know how it was explained to me, and yeah. I'm sure he got The guy I stole it from, I'm sure he stole it from somebody else, right? So yeah. But, did, he, so he, he explained it to me, and you'll, maybe you'll appreciate this too. I, I used the other drill too. He was working with a women's group, and he had his buddy, he brought a, a, a guy with him, one of his students, and he had like you know, 10, 15 women in the group. And the, 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 the guy he brought with him was just some big, intimidating looking dude that looked like he'd just rip your head off and shit down your neck kind of guy, you know? And he had, and he, and he told his friend, listen, when we get there, do not be friendly. I don't want you smiling at the women. I want you to be a dick. I want you to be there. I just want you to be distant. I want them to be afraid of you. Oh. You know? And, and, and it wasn't like in this guy's personality, but he was like, sure, see, for no problem, you know? And they get there, and he, he starts off, he has the people, had the women loosen up a little bit, and he starts right away. He calls his friend up, stand next to him. And he says, right now, if he decides he's had enough of your bullshit and he's going to just beat the shit out of you, how are you going to stop him? That's, and, that, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Right and there. the women had this inherent fear of him because he wasn't being friendly. Like he wasn't being friendly. He, you know, the instructor was being friendly to the women. Oh, hi, here, sign up here, blah, blah, blah. But the guy, the demo guy was being distant and not smiling. And when the women would try and say hello to him, he would just walk away and like mm -hmm. that kind of, so they had this little inherent fear of him. And he said, he saw the women kind of shell up and yep. they were like, 
Uh, I don't know. Um, I guess I would try and yep. run or. Yep. yep. And then he goes, okay, let's just forget this scenario. He goes, I made a mistake. I tried an experiment. That's not what I want to do. Let's do it a different experiment. <clears throat> and he says, let's say you go, you go, you're going out one night, your husband going to go to the movies and you know, you have, you have your, your kid is home and you hide the babysitter from next door, little, Mary Ann, she's 16 years old. She's going to babysit your, your kid. And you go out. And when you go out, you realize, oh, I left my bag at home. And he goes, because you women always leave your bags at home. He goes, and then like, <laughs> he goes, and then you turn around, you come home, and you tell your husband, I'm going to run in the house. And you come running in the house. And then he pulls up his demo guy. And he goes, and you see this guy here raping your kid. Yep. What are you going to do? See? And women were like, I'd rip his fucking eyes out. I, yep. I would, you know, I would take my fingernails and shred his face apart. Yep. I would, and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. When it was to save mm. your life, yep. you were all timid and ready to die. Yep. But when he was hurting your kid, yep. all of a sudden you became killers. Instincts, yeah, instincts. And think... this idea of being protector. Yes, yes. It, you're gonna when you have to protect somebody you love, yep. You want to be a killer, so we have to change our mindset. Even if the the, the protector is not there, if, even if like the person you're trying to protect is not there, your mindset has to be: is if this guy's gonna attack me, he's not trying to kill me, he's trying to kill my kid's mother. Yep. Yep. He's trying that, to make that, my kid grow really, up without yeah. a mother or father. You have to look at things in that way. Get angry. Get pissed. I, dude, I have this, I have the same conversations with my students. This is where we, I talk about this all the time. And I think it's a, it's an element that people really don't understand. And they don't really, no one really talks about this side of things is the emotional and psychological part of it. Most people, okay. I'm talking about most of the people in society in the world do not want to fight. Do oh, not sure. want to, even the guys you think that are trying to fight, they don't really want to fight. They're just oh, doing yeah. this bravado this braggadocious thing. Are they, you know, you ever see these fucking idiots that they get chest to chest? They look like fucking bears. They're like, they're yelling in each other's ear. They're, they're this close. First <laughs> right, of all, right. you don't let anybody that fucking close to you. I don't care who the fuck they are. I don't know. I don't know what they have in their pockets. I don't know. I don't know what they have in right. their hands. You know what I mean? I can't see what's going on. At that point, I'm too, you're too close. You know, so, and I've seen many, many a times that shit happens and you get cold cocked or, or sucker punched. Right, That's not so. happening to me. You, you get in my space, I'm blasting. I'm going to be straight blasting you all the, way to the, all the way across the room. So I talk about the psychological part all the time because it's a different thing. Like I said, it's a different thing when you're sparring. And you're sparring with your buddies and you're having fun. You're, you know, you're joking around. You're trying to score. Yeah, but you're not really trying to hurt the guy. And right. that guy's not really trying to hurt you. You ever see a guy who's like possessed and just has really bad intentions and wanting to hurt you? That's a different kind of feeling. People, I've seen people just shrink when they see that. You know, it's a different animal. I said, you know, you think, I go, you think that you're gonna, I'm going to fight the way I spar? Not exactly. When I'm sparring, I'm playing. I'm experimenting. I'm working on things. If I was going to fight you, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go right in your face. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to blast. I'm going to explode. I'm going to be explosive. You're not going to have time to breathe, to set up anything, to think about anything, to process anything. I'm going to be all over you. So with that kind of mindset, like you have to be, I have students that tell me that they say, yeah, but you know, I, I don't, I don't have like a mean bone in my body though. I don't, if I can do that, listen, when it comes time to save your life or the life of love, a loved one, believe me, you're going to do whatever it takes. You're going to do whatever right. it takes because human beings, we all have a, a natural instinct to survive. Okay. We all have that. All right. So, but if you don't have any training, you're going to do this, right? You're, just, you're going to cover and you're going to hope for the best. And that is the worst thing to do, especially if, if someone's got a knife or any kind of weapon, or there's like, you know, other people, there's more than one person because we always go, we always tell these, these guys that we always assume right away that when you're in an altercation that, you know, one, the person is well-trained. He's a trained killer. He knows his stuff and he's, he's absolutely talented and aggressive and, and he's in great shape. Okay. Two, He's armed with something. He can have an 
anything becomes a weapon, anything, a pencil, a pen, a set of keys, anything becomes a weapon, okay? I've seen people get in fights where they had a trailer hitch in their hand or a, a cue ball, you know? This right. is stuff that happens all the time. Sure. And third, they're not alone, okay? Right. So you, you deal with those three elements that will change your demeanor and the way you treat uh, your training, okay? If it's ever happened, I, mean, I tell people, I, when I have a big class, I said, who here has been in a fight, an actual fight? I'm not talking about a push, a shoving match. I'm talking about an actual fight, a, a confrontation where someone's trying to hurt you, not for an ego, but like they want to hurt you badly, right. okay? Like possessed. And there's a few people that raised their hands. I said, what happened? You know, how did you handle it? They said, well, at the time, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to handle it. I, I didn't have any training. So, so, what, so what happened? I said, well, I'm going to ask it. Okay. If you could go back now, think about going back now, facing that guy with the training that you've had here. You, you know, some guys have been with me for a few years. Um, they, you know, it's funny. You look at their faces. They're like, right. Right? They, want, they would love that opportunity to redeem themselves, to get yeah. back at people that have done that to them. So you can see the transformation of their confidence. Their confidence is getting higher it's getting better that they they know their ability and they know that if i can if i face that guy or that threat again i'm gonna be ready i'm gonna be ready and that's the point of doing this this is the point we are training for a fight that hopefully never happens but if it does we are game we're there right we can, that's we can awesome. take care of i for, for me and i don't know if i ever talked about it i think i did talk about it i'm not sure on this podcast or my other podcast maybe once i spoke about this it all changed for me on one day, my training. And this is gospel true story. Okay, so I grew up going to martial arts schools my whole life. You know, in Brooklyn, everybody thinks they're a tough guy, right? So of course I thought I was a tough kid growing up. But you know, I, you know not, not many fights, but you know, whatever. Typical sure. kid. When I became an adult, I um, joined the NYPD, the auxiliary police. Came an auxiliary cop in Brooklyn. You a cop? Auxiliary cop, yeah, in Brooklyn. Oh shit! Yeah. So for almost 12, 13 years. <laughs> oh my god! So one of my first experiences is I'm on a foot post in Brooklyn in a park with some other guys, and we started getting pelted with rocks and bottles and shit, right? And so there was three of us and like a mis it was a mistake was made because of course, three of us, two of us are rookies. Two of the two other guys tell me, you stay here. And they chase these other morons off into, off the path to try and get them. Well, when they did that, I get tackled out of nowhere. Yep. Yep. And it's 9.30 at night in a park, on a path in a park. Yep. I'm on my back, and this dude is choking me. Oh, jeez. That's scary. Big guy? And yeah, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, so at the time, I'm six foot two ten, right? And this guy put me down. I'm in uniform. Put me down. I'm on my back, and he's choking me. And I'm wailing, like my hands flailing about because it was on that moment that I realized, holy shit, this guy's going to kill me. Like, this isn't a fight. This is a murder. Yes. Yes. And I remember being like, oh my God, like I'm going to fucking die here. And all of my training, now I have been doing martial arts my whole life, went through the whole NYPD training all of it, I'm laying there on my back and I'm getting choked and I can't remember what to do. Well, what, when this happened, was there something that led up to it? Like, did you see this happening? Like, or it just, it just caught you by surprise? It caught me by surprise. So what happened oh, was shit. we had already been, we were getting bombarded with rocks. So I was kind of looking around in the park and next thing I know, just out of nowhere, out of behind the tree, 10 feet away, guys came running out, you know, four or five guys. And one of them just tackled me and took me down and started choking me. Yeah. You know, hitting me, I was getting punched in the face. That part didn't bother me. 
But th then when he started to choke me, I realized this guy's going to kill me. And I, I was like, you know, I'm going to fucking die here. And it was, it was at that moment that I realized, like, well, I shouldn't say that. It was that moment that I realized there's a good chance I'm going to die. So I live. <laughs> but, the, you know, my, my partner came and rescued me. And, but it was in the afterwards when I was sitting down and I'm filling out the reports and that I realized that, oh my God, like I almost got killed tonight. I got to change something. Like, and so much of my martial arts changed that day. You know, when I sat down, I spoke with my uncles who were old time cops, you know, like about like what I did wrong, what my partners did wrong. And, you know, and I talked to a buddy of mine who was a uh, martial arts instructor. And, and I realized that, the, you know, my psychology of combat had to change at that point. That I needed, that I was not ready for what I thought I was ready for. And all of my training at that point there was too refined. Take this finger and bend this way. And when you can't breathe and it's dark and you're afraid and you're sweaty, and some guy's choking you and you think you're going to die. You can't remember what you're supposed yeah. to do. You need to yep. gross motor movements to, to get yourself in a position where you can rescue yourself. Yep. You know, so it was that, that I gained the respect. Earned, learned the, that I needed to respect this idea of the psychology of combat. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was, it was, it was life changing for me. You know, it was, yeah. it was, it was life changing for me. That was, that was a big, that was a big day. That was a big day for me in the martial arts, you know, and it's something I tried to pass on to other people that this idea of you're not going to be in a fight. Don't think of this as a fight. You know, this is an assault. This is yeah. a murder. So like, if I, if me and you get into a fight, we're not getting into a fight. I'm going to fucking assault you. Yes. Yes. This is because this, a yeah. fight, a fight is, it, it denotes this idea of an exchange. Yep. It's gonna, in my head, there's no exchange here. Yep. I'm going to destroy you before you can destroy me. Exactly. And to get that, that mindset across to people who are not combative in nature is really, really, really tough. You You're know? absolutely right. You're absolutely you know? right. And when people tell me that, you know, I'm not really a fighter. Mm. I, I really, I, I understand that on a personal level. But so I tell them that story mm -hmm. of what happened to me. And I say, listen, just try and be me in that story and, and feel that fear and mm -hmm. grow from, use that fear to grow, you know? And, and, and I think like, I wish there was a way I can bottle that fear because it was, it was a healthy fear for me. You know, it was a fear that changed my life as far as, you know, uh, this, this, oh shit, I'm going to die here. Like it's, it's an amazing feeling. I mean, you know, not amazing. You know what I mean? It's, it's, no, a, it's, a, you're right. It's a, no, you're... You know, to be laying there on your back and you feel the back of your head scraping along the cement and, and you can't move and I'm, you're trying and, you know, and like, it was, it was, it was scary. Yeah. Your body you panic and stuff like that. And there's also like the, there's a swarm of, things and thoughts go in your mind. Okay. And I'm not just talking about like your life flashing before you. I'm talking about there's sometimes, especially when you're getting a surprise attack. Okay. Like someone go into their car and they get tackled from behind or they get, you know, mugged from behind. The first thought I think most people think about is first of all, what the hell is happening? Who is this person? Why are they doing this to me? You right. know, am I going to die? Like all these things are going through your mind, you know? So the people, in my opinion, that are perpetrators like this, they like a, they understand the person's going to resist a little, but they want an easy victim. They want easy. Like I tell women all the time, guys want an easy victim. Like you're going to, you're going to fight me a little bit, but you're going to comply eventually. You're going to realize right. that I'm stronger and I'm bigger and I'm going to be I'm more scary and you're going to do what I want. So if you go into the mindset of this, 
to this, it's diff- it changes that person's mindset too. They're, they're like, okay, well, this is not going to be easy now. You know, if a person knows how to do something, do defend themselves in some way, you know, if you, you know, do the finger jab right to the eye, that's going to change things a little bit. You know what I mean? You don't have to be strong to do that. You don't have to be muscular to do that. Right. You don't have to be in great shape to do that. You need timing and placement. Yes. But the psychology of the whole process of being attacked is something that most people underestimate. They don't mm. think about it. They see movies. They think it's going to be just like that. No, they see, oh, I'm training, man. It's going to happen just like this. No, it's not going to happen exactly like that. Even the drills that we do, you're not going to do it exactly the way it's done. You're going to do pieces of it. You might hit the person once and and floor him. You might hit him twice and then he backs up. You might kick him once and that might not be enough. He might be on PCP. He might not feel that until tomorrow. So you got to go into the mindset of like total, I know it sounds really bad, but you got to flip a switch when it comes to survival and real life, you have to become a person that you're not used to being. Okay. You right, have to sure. be an animal. You have to be, you have to be a killer. You have to be like, okay, look, my, my wife is behind me. Right. My mother's behind me. She can't te- she can't defend herself. So you have to go into it with the mindset. I was just, I was just talking about this last night with one of my students. You have to talk about, you know, really like a samurai, you got to go in there willing to die and say, all right, this might happen tonight. I might, I might, I might end it, but you know what? They're, they're going to have to kill me to stop me from protecting my mother or my wife or whatever. So at least you buy them some time to get away or something like that. Right. You know, right, or, right. Get to, or get to a gun or get to a weapon or get in their car and go something. So, you know, that, psycho- that psychology of fighting and combat was always very, very interesting to me. That's why I really, really like, uh, you know, reading about Customato, Mike Tyson's former teacher. Sure, and sure. Trainer. He, he understood the psychology of fighting because, you know, he would tell his fighters, you know, most trainers, most trainers, they'll tell their fighter like, hey, don't worry, man, you'll beat that guy real easy. You know, don't, you don't, don't worry about it. You, you're going to beat him easy, man. You're in better shape. You're better. Yeah. The trainer doesn't really understand that no matter what he tells his fighter, the fighter's still going to have fear. It's, they're still going to have anxiety. They're not going to sleep the night before. They're going to be shaking and tremoring. They're thinking all kinds of bad things. They're building this guy up that they're fighting in the ring to be this monster, this Godzilla, you know? So they go in that ring and they feel like, oh my God, what, what's going to happen? All the fighters feel that way. Every one of them do. And Custom Hutto was the opposite. He wouldn't tell his fighter, oh, you beat that guy easy. He'd say, look, when you get in that ring, you're going to be scared to death. You're not going to be able to sleep the night before. You're going to be thinking about this guy nonstop. Okay, and you're gonna be thinking about all kinds of bad things and you're gonna build them up in your mind to be this, this monster, this guy who doesn't feel pain and he doesn't have any emotions or anything, okay? And when you walk in that ring, you're gonna look at him and he's gonna be like looking at you real mean. He might have tattoos, he might, have, he might look really scary and he looks like he has no fear, okay? But just know, just know that he feels exactly the same way you do. He doesn't know you. He doesn't know what you're capable of. He has no idea. He's, he's afraid just like you. He's just better at hiding it. Okay. Right. He's just trying to show you a snarl and make you think, okay, maybe he'll go away if I, if I make some faces. He's scared to death. He didn't sleep the night before either. He probably didn't eat very good the night before either. He was afraid. Okay. Yeah. But it's, part of the, it's part of that whole thing. It's like, you know, he called it fire. Fear is fire. You know, fire is great when you're cold. Okay. He, he can warm up your house when you're cold. But if you let it over over, you know, just consume you, it's going to, you know, burn down your house. You got to know how to project that stuff into your opponent. And the way that you do that is, you know, honestly, just to be like uh, his, Mike Tyson's fighting style was very aggressive. There was no backstepping. There right, was no, right. Is to take the fight to him, take, make him very uncomfortable, make him not breathe, make him make mistakes, force him to make mistakes Make him think that he's in here with an animal. He's got to survive me, not me having to survive him. Okay. So that mindset of just constantly attacking, I mean, you watch that guy train. He's not, he's a fucking animal, you know, still at at his age now, he's still doing that, you know? So I like that psychology, that, that sort of mindset because it it really suits me. I mean, I'm, I'm not a bad person. No, I totally get you. I totally agree. That switch in that situation, you have to become a person 
that you're not accustomed to being. You got to be, you got to be a little mean. You got to be pretty aggressive and vicious and tenacious and, and not, and not be, not be um, afraid of getting hurt. If you're, if you're afraid of getting hurt, you're, you're not going to do very well. You're not going to do very well at all. You know, that's, that's totally agree. And one of the uh, pearls of wisdom that I got from my, one of my uncles who said they were retired detectives. My, I remember my uncle telling me, if the guy is six feet away from you, he goes, you can even say this out loud. I would tell a guy, you have six feet to kill me. Because when I get there, you're dead. So do your best. Because mm -hmm. I'm coming for you. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be your mindset. It's got to be, I'm coming for you. You got six feet to stop me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to chase you. If you run away, go. Yeah, right. But if you if you stand there, you're dying in six feet. So you got six. However long it takes me to to make this six feet, that's up to you. But when I do get there, you're dead. You know, so that's got to be the mindset. Yeah. And you know, like um, this idea of psychology and fighting is just so important. I'm so happy we're having this discussion. Because, uh, you know, very few people that I know talk about this, the psychology of the fighting, you know. Um, I, I was never in the military, but I dealt, like, so I dealt with the police department. And I, I know a little bit about what it feels like to have an altercation in the street, you know. You can't walk, you can't walk a foot post in Brooklyn, even as an auxiliary cop, a toy cop, without having some kind of... Um, understanding of what's going on and, and being observational about what's going on, you know, especially if you're a little bit intelligent, you can see what's going on. And, and I like to, you know, understand what's going on around me. And I think that that when people can understand, like I said, you, you know, you from Detroit, I'm from Brooklyn. When you, when you grow up in these kind of places and, and you just watch the interactions of people, aggressive interactions of people, the, the, this the psychology of combat comes into play in almost everything you know it's this like you say like oh you know he, he may look mean but he's really not he's scared too that's yeah. brilliant you know because that's the same thing with the guy who's balking at you in the bodega you yep. know what i mean it's like this is, he he he's just as nervous as you in this altercation except he's better at hiding it i just i'm i'm yeah. really happy you said that that's 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 brilliant that's brilliant yeah that's fantastic because I, like I said, most people, they don't, they don't really want to fight. That's why you see people getting chest to chest. They're just like, they're right. waiting for like reason. Because they know they don't have a legit reason. They just want to right. act tough, you know. And they're looking for a reason because nobody wants to be the one who just like, you know, start a fight. Walk you away. Right. Yeah. They just, you know, they don't want to fight. It's, if you can walk away and not have any altercation, that'd be the, the best, uh, oh. you know, plan of attack. But there's some people that, you know, they, they don't want to let you leave, but they, they, they want you to throw that first punch or they want you to do and you know that might happen where the person you know if, if that person invades my space i'm gonna hit them i'm not gonna wait right. for them to get that close to me because I, like i said i don't trust them i don't know what they have in their hands i don't know i don't know who they are i don't know what they're capable of so i'm gonna i'm gonna blast them right away and uh you know that's if the, if if it's legality problems or what people are worried about well the person invaded my space he came he, he approached me in an aggressive manner i had to do what i had to do you know right so, you know it's 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 being, I'm going to use the word warrior, just because being a com combat athlete, a fighter, whatever word, whatever word people are comfortable with, I think gives us the ability, if we take ego out of the equation, yeah. gives us the ability to walk away from a fight out of confidence rather than fear. You know, um, and it's, it's something only people that train fighters can experience, you know, like if, if, if me and another person had a confrontation over something ridiculously stupid, right? A parking spot. And some guy gets out of the car and he starts yelling at me. It's my spot. You fat fuck or whatever, you know, if I say, Oh, I, I'm sorry. You know, yeah, take the spot. And I get in the car and I drive away. If I do it without being a fighter, 
then I kind of maybe did it out of cowardness. Even if that wasn't the case, but I may feel that on the inside. But as a fighter, as a guy who, I always joke with my wife, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm 55 year old fat guy, but I got one good fight left in me. So you don't want to be that fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel, exactly. I feel, I feel confident. And sometimes like, like this is, this would happen to me saying somebody say something like fat this or whatever. And I'll say like, wow, you don't want to be the guy I kill over a parking spot. Yeah. So right. I'm going to leave over confidence. I'm going to, I'm going to leave the altercation feeling confident that I, I don't have to prove my manhood by beating some schmuck up for a parking spot. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm rest assured in who I am. You know, and I, and I kind of like that idea of, and it's only, only fighters can understand. You know, like you're a fighter. If some moron in the street or in a bookstore, wherever, gives you some lip, you could walk away knowing I could have beat the shit out of that dude. It wouldn't yeah. have taken me. It wouldn't have taken me thirty seconds to beat the shit out of that dude. Right. So you can walk away <laughs> and not feel bad about yourself. Yeah. But people that have no training. And, you know, intelligently do not want to have a fight. They walk away, but there's still that self-doubt that eats at them. Like, oh, what would have happened if you would have thrown a punch? Could I, could I have protected myself? There's, and, and, I, and I feel bad for those people, you know? But, and this idea of the walking away in confidence as opposed to walking away from cowardness, I think is a direct result of the psychology of the boost of being a trained fighter. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like being a trained fighter leads to having less fights in life than more fights because people that feel, I don't want I hate the word cowardice, but I'm afraid yeah. of the fight, feel like they have to fight to prove something. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, like somebody in the bookstore or the parking spot, <clears throat> they feel like they got to fight this guy or, or, or yell and scream and bump chest to prove, oh, I'm not afraid. You know, oh, I could kick your ass. And they do that out of cowardice, out of self, out of self doubt, as opposed to self confidence. But you know, yeah. Mike Tyson can walk away from any fight. He won't cause he's a psycho, but he could walk away from any fight knowing he could kick the shit out of you. Exactly. He doesn't exactly. have to fight you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, I just think that's, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a valuable commodity. That's yeah. That's actually, I mean, that, that's happened from time to time where you, you know, you run into someone where, you know, they, they, they're giving you some, they're giving you a hard time or they're, you know, they're, like you said, we're a parking spot or something stupid, something just right. totally trivial. It's not even that really, really that important, but you know, I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like, out of all the people this guy could have fucked with, he's, 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 he wants to, poke this bear that if I, if I go to that place, it's not right. going to be good for him, you know? And right, it, to me, exactly it's, like, right. it's like you said too, it's, do I really want to, you know, do I really want to go to that place and do this to this guy? He has no idea. And he's just, that he has, a, he's having a bad day and maybe he is an asshole. Maybe he is. But right. I think about the aftermath of this guy laying in a pool of blood right. and the police coming and having to explain this is, to me, it's not worth it. It's, it, it's not going to be good for him. It's not going to be a good, good time for him. And it's not, it's not worth it for me to go through all that over this guy. He's not right. threatening me. He's not threatening anybody I care about. I can walk away and I don't really care. Whatever. You can say what you want. But if the person comes into my space, that's a different story. Now you're trying to put right. your hand on me. Then I'm going to put you on the ground. I'm going to put you on the, I'm going to stick you in the ground for sure. Right, but right, right. It's not, you know, I'm not going to go and confront him. I'm not going to go and get in his face, you know, but if he yeah, comes sure, to him, sure. I'm ready, you know, but I, I, you know, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go, you know, if I go there, I'm going to go dark, you know, it's not going to be right, good. Right, 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 right. You know? I, I like to tell the story once in a while. It's just uh, my favorite story of um, when, when my kids were small, me and my wife and my oldest son were, we were shopping at a Costco and um, we're online and the gentleman in front of us online had um, two really bad cauliflower ears, right? He was in great shape, and mm -hmm. but his ears were really cauliflower, you know. Right. And my my kid was like six or something, you know. So my my kid is six, seven years old. So of course, out loud, he points at a guy's ears and says, 
Danny, why is his ears like that? You know? <laughs> yeah. So I see the guy like turn and look, you know? So I said to my son, I said, well, that's a special message he sends to everybody. Mm -hmm. He goes, what do you mean? I said, those ears say, don't fuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I, and the, and the guy smiled and he, he leans out of my son. He goes, listen to your father. He's a very smart man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's because uh, it's, it's proof of hard work. What these guys' ears represent, you know, that's yeah. um, I just, I just, I've always loved that, you know? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's, that, that's a good, that's a good way to think about it too. <laughs> yeah. So I have a question for you. Yep. What's a, what's a typical class like in your place? Well, uh, we start off, you know, uh, I, I like to get the guys right to work. If they're, you know, if it's a, uh, you know, winter time, we warm up the body, we do some shadow boxing to warm up a little bit or some footwork, something real light to get the body limbered up a little bit. Then I get them to, you know, do some, either some drilling with the pads or without the pads. If it's like a skill set, like trapping, obviously we're going to wait, you know, we'll get, we'll get the pads involved a little bit later, but the technical portion first, we go, we'll work piece by piece, kind of like a little train set, you know, you piece by piece by piece. Then we make it all one kind of blend it, blend it all together. The trapping is always probably the hardest thing for, to, for new people to teach it because it's, you know, it's foreign. Of, it's just, yeah, it's, they don't know it, you know, especially you don't know it, right? Yeah, they don't, if they come from a traditional like karate style or even boxing, trapping is very different. You know, they, they don't, yeah, sure. once they get the concept, it's easier. But once when they first see it, they don't get it. They don't understand it. And it has to, it takes time for them to get used to it. So we do like the technical portion first, and then we'll get the pads out and we'll drill it. We'll do that same technique on the pads with, uh, you know, I, I like to keep it simple when it comes to pads because... When it comes to pads, the pad holders, you know, you don't want to confuse them so much though, where you can't really keep up uh, with the trapping and the, and the uh, retrapping and all that stuff. So you try to keep it simple and make it as direct as possible, you know, very JKD. So, you know, we do a lot of pad work and conditioning, and then we do sparring. Uh, the sparring could be one-on-one -on -one, or it could be like three-on-two, three-on-one. Uh, we do simulations and we have people, you know, well, they'll line up on the side, they'll, they'll watch, you know, and they, I tell them, you know, when you're watching, you're training too, because you're watching and you're recording in your mind, what you would have done, what you could have done, you know, and think about that. And then when it comes to, you know, your turn, you can try to apply that, you know, and the thing I'm trying to get my students to do is I want you to apply what you're learning in sparring. That's the ultimate goal. Otherwise, why are you drilling anything? What's the point? What are you doing? Right, for? right, right. You know, if everything, you know, um, I like, you know, hearing these guys, sometimes people out there in the martial arts world, if you're looking at, you know, Wing Chun people or anybody in the JKD community, you get this a lot too, is, um, you know, oh, well, I'll just, I would just be GM, you know? Yeah, great. That's, that's awesome. If that would, if that works every time, great. Right. Well, what, what if it's not enough? What if, what if that, what if you miss? <laughs> you know what right. I mean? What's, what if, what's what if you don't have the skill set to actually make that happen? Yeah. Or what if the guy gets past it? What if he defends it? What if? What's your answer? You know what I mean? Like, that's the thing. You're, we're trying to be a, a complete fighter, to be comfortable in all situations. Now, the last place you want to be is on your back in a street fight. That's the last right. place you want to be. Sure. Uh, but, what, but if you get there, what do you do? How do you get back on your feet? You know, you can't, you can't straight blast from the bottom. You know, it's really right. hard. You know, you can't sidekick from the, from the bottom. It's, it's really hard. So, you know, those things, it's easy for a lot of people to say, well, I'll just sidekick them. I'll just do that. Yeah, it's easy to say that because a lot of people, especially in the Wing Chun community, they're all, they all, it's all about theory, theory, theory. Okay, it's great. Theory is great, but show me, you know, prove it to me. Let me see. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the litmus test is show me, you know, because it's good. It's easy to say, I'll do this. I can do that. Yeah, you can do that. But will it work every time? Will it be enough for every single person you face? Like, I think to me that the most difficult guys to go against, honestly, is the wrestler. You know, boxers are tough too, but wrestler is tough. You know, why is they'll take a punch. They'll take a kick to the face if they can get that leg. If they can get that leg, now you're in their world. This guy's gonna, the guy's going to wrap you into a pretzel. You know, so it's not, you know, I, I'm not, uh, I just started my like jujitsu journey, re, you know, this year. You know, or I just mm -hmm. started, you know, training jujitsu now. I had some uh, grappling experience in the past, but it was more with no gi and stuff like that. But I said, you know, 
if I'm going to learn, you know, jujitsu or grappling, I, I think I'd rather do it with the gi because it's more realistic to street fighting. Because you know, unless you're on the, yeah. the beach, you're going to be wearing a shirt or a jacket or something. And it's you know, it's a good element sure. to kind of. It's more, it's harder, and it's slower because it's so much more detailed. But it's okay. I, I, what, I'm, I'm, you know, time's going to go by anyway. You know, so right. I, I'd rather be. <laughs> not like you got a, not like you got a fight coming up. Not like yeah, you, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's great. It's frustrating. It's not easy to learn. It's not. I think. No, I know. Well, don't, you know, it's a lot, it's like this in a lot of arts, like trapping and uh, Wing Chun and Kali even too. Like people, I, listen, I, I was one of those guys when I started learning JKD, I'm like, I don't want to learn Kali or anything like that. I don't know anything else. I just want JKD, you know, but I, later on, I understood, you know, what that meant, what, you know, Kali, it's a, it's a, it's like, I compare it to like, you know, First of all, it does make you better with a weapon, obviously. You know, you get the knife work, sure. you get the stick. It's, good. it's a good thing to have. It's a good skill to have. But it's also something like, it's like a speed bag, right? We don't fight like this. We don't fight. Nobody fights like this, okay? We don't do that. Right. Okay? But it's a training tool. It's a... It's a attribute it's a, development. Uh, attribute development, yes. And it, if you, my teacher used to tell me all the time, he said, you know, if you... When you, try, when you start training with the weapons, you're going to notice everything's going to get better. All your trapping is going to get sharper. Your punch is going to be more crisp. Your movement's going to be much more better. And I, I'm like, that's bullshit. Like, how's that going to help me move, be a better, like, fighter, you know, if I'm not really, like, you know, hitting something or if not really punching or kicking? This, what's that going to do? But he was right. He was right. But the thing is, I neglected my weapons training for years. I just threw them away. I was so frustrated with learning it because it was so hard. It was so hard in the beginning, especially, thank God. But I understood later on, I, I had to relearn a lot of stuff and I had to kind of, you know, catch up with a lot of stuff that I missed. So, um, but I, I, I value what I learned uh, in the weapons training and stuff. And I, I still train, of, of course, I still train and teach weapons and stuff. So I think it's an important element, but uh, uh, you're trying to be a complete fighter, a well-rounded martial artist. Sure. And if nothing else, you know, honestly, you know, I look at it as moving meditation. All these things that we do in martial arts, it's moving meditation. When I shadow box, I'm not just warming up my body. I'm, I'm going somewhere else. You know, I'm, uh, I'm well, I'm going to say going somewhere else. I'm in touch with my body, my mind, my spirit. Everything has got to connect. And I'm feeling every single movement, you know, in my body, rooted to the floor. You know, I'm listening to sounds. I'm, I'm, I'm more present when I'm doing uh, martial arts and movement, because I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of movement. I, I think that's what I really like. And the fitness aspect of this whole thing is just a part of it. I, it's, I'm, not, I'm not like a, I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm not a, a fitness uh, um, competitor. I do this for martial arts. I do this to be a better martial artist and, and better athlete, but better martial artist overall, you know? Mm. Very good, very good. Yeah, dude, this was a lot of fun. You know, we, the hours up already. Wow, it went, it went so fast. This yeah, was this right. was a this was a lot of fun. I really appreciated this, man. Yeah, Nick, me this, too, man. This was really good. Now, you know, coming into this today, I had no idea we were going to talk about the psychology of fighting. I, I think that wasn't on my mind at all. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I love about this environment. Like I say, like two coaches sitting down having a pizza over a kitchen table. It's like you never know what's going to come out, and you have some of the best discussions in the world, yeah, because of it. And I really am grateful that you uh, you did this with me today. I, you know, I I think this is going to be an excellent resource for people, and, yeah. I'm, and I'm hoping you'll come on again with me. Um, and, I would too. Yeah, all right, great. I would appreciate that. And you know, we're, I'm going to probably in a few weeks, or I'll contact you, and we'll we'll come up with yeah. another date. And yeah. um, but before we hang up here. Why don't you tell the folks how they can get in touch with you and uh, get some training with you? Yeah, yeah. So I'm in the Southfield area in Michigan. Uh, if anybody wants to come up and train here, uh, if you're ever in town or if you're ever just curious to kind of see what we do, we're in Southfield, Michigan. We're on the corner of Inkster and Northwestern here. And uh, it's called Allied Martial Arts. It's a uh, home of uh, adaptive combat method, which is my, my method, and the uh, Azure Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which is my partner. And we both do this together. So, and we have a great school. We have great people here. And if ever you guys want to reach out, man, just, you know, go to our website and go to the Facebook page, leave us a message and, you know, we would get back to you. All right. Fantastic. 
And for you folks uh, watching and listening, I would appreciate if you can subscribe to the uh, podcast, uh, JKD Blueprint. It, it helps my life a little bit. And I want to try and, if you're enjoying this, help me help, me help this, get this to grow. Because I want to have quality people on here like Nick that we can really make this a valuable resource for people. So if you're watching this and you're enjoying it, I would really appreciate it, folks, if you can subscribe to either the YouTube page or the podcast feed and it would, it would help it grow. All right, folks, we'll see you soon. And Nick will be back. All right, big, big, uh,